Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this press conference on the second day uh, here live from Davos. This is the 48th annual meeting of the World Economic Forum. Obviously, you managed to uh, make your way through the snow, so thank you for being here. Welcome. Welcome also to our live stream audience on Facebook, Periscope, and wherever you're watching. You're, uh, you're most welcome. This press conference is dedicated to the launch of the Global Center for Cybersecurity by the World Economic Forum. And we're very pleased to have a fantastic expert panel on that particular subject here today. Um, let me introduce my fellow panelists to you. To my immediate left, we're joined uh, by Alois Zwingi, who's a member of the managing board of the World Economic Forum, and in this case, more importantly, also the head of the new Global Center for Cybersecurity. To his left, uh, we're joined by Kim Koro. She's the president for Cybersecurity Solutions and senior vice president at Qualcomm uh, Technologies based in the USA. Uh, right uh, next to her, we're joined by Rob Wainwright, who's the director of Europol, or European Police Office, but I think uh, you're all familiar with the term Europol. Um, and last but definitely not least, uh, we're joined by Stanislav Kuznetsov, the deputy chairman of Spurbank uh, from Russia. Thank you very much uh, for being here, and we're looking forward to hearing you uh, on uh, this topic. But first, Alois, let me introduce, uh, let me invite you to uh, tell our audience um, what do we have in mind with the Global Center for Cybersecurity? Why is the World Economic Forum active in that uh, area? Please. Thank you, Georg. Good morning. Um, clearly, cybersecurity has, in the last uh, years, become one of the world's most pressing issues. So the cost of cybercrime is globally currently estimated to be around $500 billion annually, and it clearly shows no signs of slowing. So cybersecurity also affects now all aspects of society, including economic growth. As such, addressing the topic is really important for us. The forum, as an international organization for public-private cooperation, clearly sees a need here for much greater collaboration in that space. And so through the launch of that Global Center for Cybersecurity, we are committed to achieve a, cy a safer cyberspace by rendering more robust and more resilient. The center will look at the different challenges and issues presented by cybersecurity and engage governments and private sector to find common solution to these issues. Now let's look at the five areas where the forum will uh, focus on in that center. First of all, we want to continue the implementation of existing forum cybersecurity initiatives, such as the recommendations for public-private partnership against cybercrime, but also the Cyber Resilience Playbook for public-private cooperation that we just launched uh, here before uh, this annual meeting. We also want to establish a repository for cyber information crucial that private sector and public sector actually share information globally on what's going on in that space. We also believe we have a unique opportunity to bring together private sector and public sector in providing educational opportunities for private sector, but also for public sector, especially in countries where currently we see a lot of potential for uh, the strengthening uh, of cybersecurity. We also will work on recommendations for appropriate regulatory frameworks on cybersecurity. And last but not least, we will work on defining future cybersecurity scenarios. Just think about the impact of quantum computing uh, on cryptography and cryptology in the, in the years to come. So these issues cannot be tackled alone. Partnership and alliances are required, therefore, for the center to encourage more cooperation and communication. We expect to add value to the work of governments, but as well the private sector, by bringing together stakeholders in the field of cybersecurity to find long-term solutions. The autonomous global center for cybersecurity will be located in Geneva and operational as of March. I use the term autonomous because it will be part of the World Economic Forum's foundation structure. However, it will have its own organization and it will also have its own infrastructures. Members of these centers will be comprised of global companies from industries most impacted by cybersecurity. And on the government side, we will work with G20 and other relevant governments and also international organizations uh, to have a very active collaboration. 
So through the forum's past projects in the cyber domain, we really identified this missing space for a platform for dialogue on cybersecurity. A great deal of initiatives and projects already exist in that space all over the world, but we think that a need for a public-private partnership on a global level will address some of these challenges presented by cyber threats and risk. So to conclude, we aspire for that center to lead the way in catalyzing much greater cooperation in dimish, diminishing the impacts of malicious activities on the web by addressing all threats from a public-private partnership perspective. Thank you, Alois. Uh, Kim, let's hear from you uh, as a representative of the private sector here, but also as a representative of a company that's very active in that space, uh, cyber security solutions. Uh, what's your perspective? Um, how big is the need for, for more collaboration globally? Thank you, and it's a pleasure being here this morning. Um, let me start with some background from a Qualcomm perspective. Our technology has powered the mobile wireless ecosystem since the rise of digital communications and also most recently during third and fourth generation cellular with the smartphone revolution. But where we sit right now is in a very powerful time because we are about to lead, we are leading in the fifth generation of wireless, which is going to be exponentially enhanced performance on networks. And what that means in our view is it's gonna be as revolutionary as electricity and the automobile was because when you look at today in connectivity, you have people on their smartphones primarily and um, hooking into the internet. But now there's going to be billions of devices that are going to be interconnected. And when you think of all of those connectivity vectors, you can imagine how much more cybersecurity becomes e an even greater challenge. Now at Qualcomm, we have quite an emphasis on security in our product development. We believe in designing security in and also though we look at it from a complete end-to-end -end capability. And so what that means is we already collaborate within our industry substantially because we have to work with the equipment manufacturers, the network manufacturers, the carriers, the cloud providers. But that collaboration, while it's excellent and ongoing to look at security enhancements, needs, in my view, in our view, to be rise to a global focus. And that collaboration is something that doesn't just happen. It really takes a lot of relationship building. Um, on the public-private perspective, our view is that the Global Center is going to be an excellent opportunity to, have, to build those relationships, to have understanding across all the various verticals that are going to start connecting. There's going to be new business models in healthcare, automotive. Um, there already is so many issues in the existing verticals that are using wireless connectivity. I want to comment on the fact that I was honored to be able to participate in the preparation meeting for the Global Center in November. And it was a meeting where there were industry, public, private folks in the room. And one thing that was very, very clear on all the topics that we covered is the fact that there is so much expertise so much wisdom and yet such a need for sharing a perspective and building that trust where both the public and the private folks can define how do we have actionable information sharing. And I think from my optic, that is what we need is to be regularly in the room ahead of the cyber crisis as the designs are being made, as the cyber crime issues are exponentially going to be increasing. Thank you, Kim. Uh, Rob, uh, you're representing the, the law enforcement here. Um, so uh, what's your perspective on, on global cooperation? Obviously, you're also globally active, uh, but also as a second question already, do you feel that the CEOs, that the business leaders, obviously apart from the, uh, uh, from the panelists left and right to you, have understood the, the significance of the threat? I think they're beginning to, and let me first start by congratulating Alois and his colleagues in the forum for, for making cybersecurity a really top billing issue at this year's forum. I've been working uh, with the forum for the last six or eight years on helping to build cyber and other, other initiatives. This year is a big deal and it's clear from the business leaders that I'm meeting here that they're, they're getting it much better uh, and, and I think that's, that's testimony to, to the work of, of the World Economic Forum. 
Uh, and of course, the, the establishment of the Global Center for Cybersecurity is, is another very important signal um, around that. Just as well, I think, because from what I see uh, across the uh, landscape of uh, cybersecurity threats in the world, particularly focused in Europe, is that this is a threat that's becoming more complex, more challenging. It's becoming bigger in scale. We're up to 4,000 ransomware attacks. This is ransomware has become the number one malware problem, powered especially by the criminal abuse of virtual currencies. We saw the impact of the famous now WannaCry impact last year. Uh, tens of thousands of companies ar around the world. Um, we're seeing data breaches that are now uh, impacting billions, not millions, but billions of, of, of users uh, as well. We're seeing a trend towards critical services, including banking sector, for example, really now in the firing line um, as these professional cr cyber criminal syndicates go after uh, higher value targets uh, in in, in in a more targeted and precise way. We're seeing behind that um, enormous forums on the dark net that, that are underpinning this, this cyber criminal economy and also a growing integration, a blending of state-sponsored activity and knowledge and, and cyber criminal activity. So this, this, the nature of the threat is challenging uh, and it means that we have to work very hard together in response. Now, I know most of that because at Europol, we, we run the Europe, European Cybercrime Center, bringing hundreds of companies and law enforcement agencies together to exchange intelligence, I think, in a very enterprising way. Um, and it allows us to run around 200 very high-profile international investigations a year. So we are finding a way to fight back as well. And the success of that is, has, has only been possible by our ability to build networks and to use data across those networks to understand the problem better uh, and use it as the basis by which to respond in operational terms. Now, however pleased I am with the work we do at Europol, it's not nearly enough. Uh, and there's only s a certain reach that we have, and that's why I'm so delighted that the World Economic Forum, with its unique networking capability, is now establishing this global center for cybersecurity uh, because it will interconnect a large dynamic, very important business communities for purposes of raising awareness, spreading best practice. All of the initiatives that Alois talked about, uh, I think, will take us to a, a new level of public-private cooperation. And there's absolutely full support from the law enforcement community I represent in Europe. And I congratulate this, the forum on, on the establishment of the center today. Thank you, Rob. Stanislav, you're representing a major uh, global financial institution here on the panel. Um, and I, I, I would think that cybersecurity is, is very much on the top of your mind. Um, I hope you're, you're still sleeping well. Um, but what's your perspective uh, on, on cybersecurity, and especially on, on this idea of, of more information sharing and a stronger global cooperation? Good morning, colleagues. Uh, it is a great pleasure for, uh, for me to be here with you today and uh, to take part in this press conference. Uh, on behalf of uh, Sperbank Group, I would like to say that we support the foundation and the quick launching of the Global Center for Cybersecurity. And uh, we are very good understand and uh, we are absolutely sure that this, that, uh, this center will become the special uh, public private platform for three or several very important directions. Uh, I think, uh, first of all, we can, we can receive uh, the unique platform for, um, for uh, mutually beneficial collaboration and cooperation between business and uh, state institutions. Uh, you know, we need uh, a new dialogue, a new discussion platform for finding of uh, new regulations, new, ru new uh, rules, and new maybe uh, guidance for our practices. Secondly, uh, we can receive uh, the uh, effective tools for information sharing, information sharing between law enforcement and public-private companies. And finally, and this is very, very important, we we can uh, have in near future 
the reliable expertise and research center providing independent analysis, independent evaluations, independent assessment in cybersecurity area. And being not only the largest bank in Russian Federation and in Eastern Europe, uh, but also the most advanced technology company in our region, uh, we are very good to understand that uh, uh, we can make a solid contribution to the development of this center. Uh, for example, we, uh, we are ready to provide other par partners with unique information about uh, activities of the large group of cyber criminals. And we have this information about activities uh, of cyber criminals uh, which operate in finance industry on uh, international level today. And we will be happy to share this information with law enforcement, with our colleagues. Uh, we will share information with our best practices, our techniques, techniques which we use uh, to secure uh, our core systems and our clients. And uh, it is my strong belief that nowadays the Global Center for Cybersecurity is one of, of the most promising cybersecurity initiatives in the world. And uh, I sincerely hope that we will follow the ideas of honored and respected Jean-Luc Ve about, about global approach to struggle against cyber criminals, uh, maintain this idea these ideas all over the world and uh, develop them fruitfully. Thank you. Thank you, Stanislav. And for those of you watching, uh, we're very grateful for your remark here. Uh, Jean Luc Vey um, was the colleague who has been very uh, central to the work preparing the center. He un he unexpectedly passed away just before Christmas. So uh, we appreciate. Uh, we appreciate you mentioning him. He's dearly missed, and all of this work would not have been uh, possible without his uh, contribution. Um, thank you so far uh, to my panelists. Um, we have some time for, for question and answers. Um, before I open the floor, um, I'd like to ask uh, one question um, that um, we got through social media. Um, it is uh, an interesting question, and uh, we've been working on cybercrime and, and fighting cybercrime for several years now. We had several press conferences over the years, and we always get this question. Now, let's take the hypothetical case a company is being hacked. Um, would you say the company is allowed to hack back, yes or no? Who, who wants to volunteer for that question? Ask one of the companies here present. <laughs> <laughs> well played, Rob, well played. <laughs> Kim, you feel you can, you can answer that one? I think we should see what you say from the Cyber Center perspective. Ah, Luis. Okay, I, I think that's particularly the reason why this center is needed to bring public and private sector together and actually to de develop together uh, measures and develop together strategies um, on, on how to combat that. I think we now, with such a question, we really move into very legal grounds, and that is uh, also uh, an area where our center can play a strong role, because what, we, what we're talking about is that currently countries have their laws, uh, and, and uh, maybe that answer might be different, answered differently in one leg legislation and, and, and another. So m my first take on this question would be, I think that's one of the main reasons why, where we can add value by starting to think about the protocols, uh, how to react in, in, such a, uh, in such a situation. Yeah, I think, I think that's, a, that's a good point. Alois, and there are very significant legislative differences between countries. Of course, I would encourage every company uh, to stay within the law, of course. Uh, and this is sometimes on the edge of that. Um, and of course, in the end, you know, we are, we are better than them, aren't we? So um, we, uh, we should make sure that our, our practices are right uh, and proper as well. That's not to say that uh, the companies should not be very enterprising in their, in their ability to monitor the threats. So by having a monitoring capability on the darknet, for example, um, is, is the sensible thing to do. Um, 
especially if in these forum chat forums, um, you know there are there is discussion between criminals about how to target your particular company. So there are ways of doing this that are uh, more enterprising than they are at the moment, but still critically within the boundaries of the law, of course. And I would just like to add that it's absolutely important to continue to vigilantly understand what the vulnerabilities are. And the, the hope is that you aren't in the crisis when you're trying to determine what to do, but to build the information sharing ahead of the crisis and education and draw on the entire ecosystem of experts, whether it's researchers. Um, we, for instance, at Qualcomm, were the first silicon company to do a bounty for folks that would find vulnerabilities and so that we can get all of that information. It, as I'd like to say very simply, it takes a village, a very global one. Okay, and, uh, I would like to add as well. And uh, uh, this center, this is our opportunity to, to improve our collaboration. And I remember a very good uh, last year, uh, the conference in Singapore, Interpol, and web conference in Singapore and very interesting discussion on this conference and we discussing um, and we discussed about uh, improving of our cooperation and we have only now one way road about our information sharing and what it was very interesting discussion and we have now very very good opportunities to uh, to create a two ways road between business and between state institutions and law enforcement as well Thank you. Thank you. If I might add, add to this, um, I think what happened last year is, especially in boardrooms, the topic of cybersecurity and cyber attacks have moved, has moved from a technological problem to a risk management problem. And, uh, and, and I think organizations are increasingly aware that they have to prepare their boards, their senior managements, on the areas of cyber attacks and uh, as they have had in the past on, on other business risks and business continuity uh, issues. Uh, somebody uh, used to say, you know, in, in, in a company every year they would do a fire drill and even the CEO would have to make sure that he knows where to go uh, if a fire breaks out on his floor. And I think the same applies <clears throat> to cyber attacks nowadays where literally the whole management needs to be very clear what to do in, in, in a case like that. Thank you, Alois. We have time for one or two questions. Um, we have a microphone. If you could state your name and organization for the sake of our audience, please. Hello. Um, my name is Maria Knezeva. I'm a journalist from news agency um, RIA Novosti. And actually, I have a question to Mr. Kuznetsov, if I may. Um, so, Zberg Bank is deeply involved in the cybersecurity um, in uh, cybersecurity work and awareness in Russia and uh, also globally. Um, you had the center, the competence center for cybersecurity within a digital economy program in Russia. And uh, my question is, could you please tell us more about what the what is the progress in this field and what are your plans there? Thanks. Okay, thank you thank very much. You. Thank you for your question. Yeah. Uh, do you know Sberbank uh, really run uh, the special center for uh, competence of competence in uh, new Russian government program digital economy, and this uh, center of competence in, uh, on cybersecurity field, and uh, we began our work for uh, uh, no, four months ago, and uh, we began our work from. Uh, to collect the community, business community, for discussing uh, about our, uh, for discussing our problems, and we made diagnostic uh, the entire problems in uh, cybersecurity field in our country, and we collected, I think, uh, 400 experts from from business companies, Russian business companies, and it was great work for uh, find different problems. And after this work, we began to make a uh, plan for activities. And now we have uh, more than 500 activities in this plan. And we <laughs> send this plan to our government. And we are involved now in uh, government, Russian government program, um, uh, digital economy uh, in cybersecurity field, in cybersecurity area. And uh, uh, very important uh, that we 
all very good understands that uh, the criminals, cyber security, cyber criminals today and hackers don't have national board now, and we have to collaborate more, more, more together in our country and abroad as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, do we have any other questions? Still thinking about it, that allows me to ask one more question that came in through our social media. Um, so we have a, a lot of uh, students and, and young audience following us on social media, obviously, and they, they've been asking, okay, if I want to work in the future in the, in the field of cybersecurity, what should I study? What kind of training should I get? Very practical question, I know, but maybe you want to uh, try and answer. Well, uh, and, and certainly I'm thrilled to hear that folks are maybe wanting to be in the field because one of the things that we identified in the Cyber Center preparatory meeting was the dire need for talent in, in this area. So the first thing I would say is big opportunity, please go into this field. Um, certainly there's the technology piece and I think that goes without saying, understanding information systems and so forth. But really, as you look at the complexity of what we're talking about, I think you want to study public policy. You want to have an idea, you want to have an understanding of global policies you, um, and have an understanding of how there's different cultures and different reactions. I also think that in addition, it would be very helpful to pay attention to some of the economic ramifications of cyber so that you understanding what those investments need to be. I think what we need to see a change in is folks that come and have the understanding of the value that um, security brings and the value um, as opposed to the cost. And that takes a broader perspective than just being a technologist and creating the capabilities. Let me just add one, one thing to that as well. Data science, I think, is becoming more and more important in this field. And we've seen it at Europol how we're collecting uh, large amounts of data from multiple source points, how we're applying modern data analytical capabilities and how that really does power uh, a better insight. But there are not enough data scientists there and the business of having enough people who can analyze data, who can make sense of it, I think is, is a hugely important part for the future. But I agree with the point you made that um, it's great that there are more and more people uh, that are willing to, are interested in studying this because we don't have an, uh, as enough talent. And I just want to add, in addition to that, you, you reminded me, thank you, um, the whole space of machine learning and artificial intelligence is going to absolutely be a very valuable education to have because the way we are going to conquer this is more and more intelligence and rapid healing and updating and artificial intelligence, I have a lot of hope for, is really going to help this problem. Thank you. Stanislav, you uh, wanted to add? I would like to add uh, one small point. Um, for us, it's very, very important to develop uh, cybersecurity culture and cybersecurity education. I think it is very, very impo important for us. If, if I can also add from, from our point of view, I, I think I heard a number that currently or soon about 200, 2, million, 2 million experts are, are, are needed in that field. So clearly we talk here about a war for talent coming towards us. And, and I think that awareness building can only star, start early enough. I think we really have to start targeting primary schools with, with, with this and, and really work up the whole educational chain. So this capacity building, this educational opportunity area is clearly one of the focus areas that the center wants to work on. And we've had very interesting and encouraging conversations with uh, regional development banks. So for example, the Inter-American Development Bank has seen that they could really support uh, the, the activities of the center through potentially funding uh, uh, capacity building projects in Latin American countries. And so I think, again, the, the forum's platform of, of, of being uh, a place where international organizations, businesses, and private sectors can come together could really be one of the places where we can push this um, this need or to push this uh, solution also for more talents and more capabilities in, uh, in, in cybersecurity expertise. Thank you, Alois. Um, we're almost uh, out of time, but I want to ask one last question because we, we were very, we thought it was uh, quite a funny question that came in through social media. Has any one of you ever clicked on an email where somebody promised that you won the lottery? You really want me to tell the truth? <laughs> Please go ahead. 
Um, ironically, our corporation runs lots of <laughs> fire drills on that. And I was very proud up until about six months ago because I'd never fallen for one and they got me. So fortunately, it wasn't real. It was my own company, but that's pretty embarrassing when you got the cybersecurity <laughs> title that you fell for it. So it's on but, the record now. Well, you learned from it, so thank you for sharing. <laughs> Gentlemen, did this ever uh, happen I'm to you? I'm delighted that I win the lottery every day. <laughs> <laughs> no, me too as well. And we have a special learning for every our members uh, in this field as well. To yeah for our phones and for our uh, computers. Yeah, I was targeted once uh, that I had a long lost relative in Spain with a similar name, but I knew that I don't have any relatives in Spain, so at least I was spared from this one. I'd be interested to hear the Spanish uh, version of your name, uh, Twingy, <laughs> but uh, unfortunately we've run out of time. Thank you very much uh, for being here. Thank you very much for my panelists. Thank you very much for watching. Keep watching throughout the rest of the week. You'll see more activities on cybersecurity, more workshops, more discussions. Um, so it's a topic that will stay with us for sure. Thank you very much.